So I'm having dinner on uh, Saturday night. Just kind of minding my own business. And I get a text message. And it's a beautiful picture. And the picture, there's three guys. They've all been on this show. Two of them are on regularly having this meeting of the minds. Now, we always kid around, Bernie, when people get together about Mensa meetings. Usually it's not. They're usually not very bright. This really could have been a Mensa meeting. Because what you had was at a posh hotel in Miami, Arthur Idala, Joseph Tacopina, and Jose Baez. Wow. That's a pretty good law brain trust, no, Bernie? like a future Supreme Court. Right? Yeah. That's, that's OJ's dream team. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the three of them had dinner together. They were down at St. Thomas. You remember Artie was here on Friday, he was, yes. I guess. And uh, so he met Jose and Joseph down in Miami. And I guess they talked all things law. Joining us this morning live from Italy is one of those three. And that is the great and famous defense attorney, Joseph Tacopino. Good morning, Joe. Hey, guys. Buongiorno. 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 So what was this about, this um, this whole thing down in Miami, all these great lawyers? What was that about? You know, Jose really put this together for his law school, and it was uh, uh, for continuing legal education credit for lawyers to either get credits or for, for law students to learn. But it was a really great panel of of trial lawyers throughout the country. Ben Crump was there. Um, Ron Sullivan, Harvard Law Professor, wow. who tries a lot of cases. Um, okay. Yeah, it was a really great panel of, of basically of trial advocacy, trial advocacy. And, you know, I handled cross-examination for a couple of days. Arthur did uh, summation stuff. Um, Jose did opening statements. It was, uh, it was really a great, great panel. And when you work with lawyers like that, you know, obviously Arthur and I know each other for since we were kids. Jose and I know each other for many years. We did that show out together in Los Angeles a few years ago. You know, you get to really understand, appreciate the, the genius that's out there. It's pretty cool. It was really great for me, um, you know, and these guys. And, of course, they're my brothers, those two. So it was nice. It was really nice. But the one thing I don't understand is how the hell do you go to law school in Miami? I would have, been, I would have like, never made it out of the first year. Well, I, 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 listen, lounge, I went to undergrad. Chairs, I, I went lounge I, I did A, B, and C. A is the dormitory. C are the classrooms and nestled in between B, the rat skeleton bar and two Olympic sized swimming pools with girls walking around in bikinis all day. So the oh question is, God. how do you get from A to C? You can't. Sid, 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 <laughs> Sid, let me tell you something. That's the funniest thing. I'll tell you this. My son Joe was, was recruited as a, a football player at the University of Miami as a kicker. And he went down there on an official visit. I went with him. And what you just said is exactly what happened. We went from the, the, to the official tour, and he's walking, you know, with his uh, University of Miami football tour guide, whatever. And I'm dragging behind. And in the middle of the quad is this pool. <laughs> These little girls, like yeah. college girls in bikinis are sitting out there. And I'm looking at him going like, you're definitely going here, aren't you? I mean, there's, do you really even care if you ever kick the ball? <laughs> it's insanity. I mean, really insane. So I'm so happy that I'm back in cold, frigid New York where it's gray and, and no one's in bikinis in the middle of the day and there's no loud chair. So. By the way, is Jose uh, dating Casey Anthony? Is there any truth to that rumor? Uh, yikes. Yikes! No, there's no truth to that. Hey, Come listen, on. we just talked to uh, Dove Hyken. He he sued Alexandria Ocasio Cortez for blocking him on Twitter, saying that she violated his First Amendment uh, rights, and uh, she issued an apology. Anyway, she was supposed to be in court with him today, uh, but she just uh, apparently the the apology sufficed. She doesn't have to show up. I mean. Uh, what, what, I mean, can you just do that? Just say, oh, okay, I give up, or shouldn't you have to uh, show up in court? No. If I mean, in a civil case, no, it's different. If it was a, obviously in a criminal case, when you're the guest of honor, um, you don't have the option of not showing up. You must be there, or a warrant's issued for your arrest. In a civil case where it's civil disputes, you don't have to be in court unless you're ordered by the court. Your lawyers can handle it. I mean, but to me, honestly, Bernie, what you just said to me is, is just so unfortunately indicative of our times that there's now litigation over whether someone's friending somebody else or defriending or blocking on social media. I mean, we have just gone into a massive tailspin, if that's where we're at now. She blocked me on social media, and I'm going to file a lawsuit. Are you kidding me? I mean, does anyone care? 
that much about Soros. Well, well they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It started with Donald Trump last summer. That's why this law came about, because of Trump. So, um, Tack, you, uh, your name comes up, Arthur Idala's name come up all the time. We talk about bail reform and what the city is bracing themselves for January 1st of 2020. Now we find out, by the way, some of these inmates will be let out before. And we always kind of joke around. The guys like Tack, Apina, Idala, they're going to make a ton, a ton of money. But i uh, tell you who doesn't think that's very funny is the Commissioner Jim O'Neill, who decided to step down yesterday. Listen, don't confuse the issue. He stepped down because he got a good job out in California. But, but he did say that if you think the city is bad now, wait till January 2020 when the inmates are running the asylum. This city is going to be uninhabitable. Your thoughts? Mm, my thoughts are that that's a law enforcement perspective. It's a cop's perspective. It's not... It's not reality. Look, there's the pendulum swings both ways sometimes too far in either direction. And even though I'm a defense lawyer, I, I, Bernie and I have often agreed on some of the things that are happening out there that are just too much when it comes to reform. But bail reform is a good thing. Look, I dealt with this in Philadelphia with Meek Mill. Sid. It was when I came to understand what was happening in that city, which is very similar to what happens in this city. I mean, when I tell you in the city of Philadelphia, the majority, the majority of inmates were there for violations of probation or violations of bail. I mean, you know, bail reform, bail is not meant to be punitive. Bail is before you're, you're convicted of anything. Bail is supposed to assure, ensure your return to court. It's not supposed to give you punishment. And, and when the prison is overpopulated with people on bail, um, or people in there because they cannot make bail, it's a problem. It's not what the system was meant for. The system's not able to hold that, and it's just not really what we as a society want to do. It's not, you know, you're, you're guilty until proven innocent. You're well, presumed innocent. I know to some people that doesn't mean anything. No. But to anyone who really cares about the system, it means a lot. Nobody can disagree with what you just said, Joe. Nobody. However, uh, it seems that we're going way too far the other way. Just the other day, this uh, judge up in the Bronx, her name is Shari Michaels, uh, two guys, two guys, two case, two separate cases. They were uh, arrested on gun charges. One of them was shooting a gun into a crowd. They both had uh, records of at least ten arrests apiece. The Bronx DA says, "Hey, I want fifty grand for this guy because his his record is a little more violent than the other guy who he asked for twenty five grand uh, bail." 50 and 25, she said no bail for both of them. And that's what you're going to get with this uh, this new law coming in. Uh, charges like criminally negligent homicide, aggravated assault, no bail. That's going way too far the other way. Bernie, if, if what you just said is exactly accurate, and I'm not doubting you, but, you know, you weren't there, so maybe the story's askew a little bit. But if what you said is exactly accurate, I agree with you. I'm a defense lawyer, but I was a prosecutor. And I would lose my mind if there was no bail for somebody who has a record who is, you know, accused of shooting a gun into a crowd of people, which is an attempted murder, by the way. Um, bail is, of course, necessary in a situation like that, and it's standard. But for every one of those examples, I could give you ten more examples where someone who's committed a minor crime with no record has gotten bail placed on them that's, you know, in, they're incapable of making, and it becomes yeah. punitive. So they're, they're, you know, unfortunately, you could cite one of those. I could cite one on the other way, and and that's that's where the system. Look, the system's not perfect. Our system, it's the best in the world by far. Believe me, I practice in other countries. I've seen it. I have a case here in Italy that I'm dealing with right now. Um, but oh, they're you know, a mess. It's, it's, yeah. They're a mess. But everywhere's a mess. It honestly, yes, they're a mess here. There's the Napoleonic Code is in effect here. Yeah. I mean, people get under investigation. You're in jail. <laughs> the investigation. I know. I swear to God. I know. I mean, no. it's like they're tough. I mean, at least the, the food is good in jail. <laughs> but I'm always a little bowl uh, Yeah, I, I know you do. I'm going to wrap it up with this. For me, at least, uh, I'm always uh, I don't know curious about Americans who got arrested in Italy. I mean, Amanda Knox is about to write a Dear Abby column out in Seattle. That's a true story. She got that gig yep. after being, I believe, convicted twice of that sex murder in Italy many many years ago. Well, not that far removed from those two kids, I guess, from San Francisco. Francisco, who murdered the dr during a drug deal gone bad. What happened to those guys? They're oh, they'll <laughs> they're gonna be get, they're gonna be eating good food for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what happened to them. I mean, those guys are. Uh, I've seen the evidence in that case. I mean, it's 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 tragic. I mean, these two ki privileged kids, by the way, come here, bring a weapon. Somehow they got that through <laughs> airport security. I have no idea. But they got a big machete to airport security that they checked the bag in. And, and, and there's video and there's witnesses. And it's, um, you know, two kids over a drug deal stabbed and killed a police officer. One who, by the way, was just married a month before and was right. buried in the 
same church, or had the funeral in the same church as wedding, which is horrifically uh, sad. Yeah, yeah. So there's no there, there, and there is no presumption of innocence here. I mean, you know, in Italy, it's it's you know, you'll stay in jail until we figure out what happened, and, and <laughs> yeah. unless we figure out you're innocent. <laughs> kind of so like those that. guys are gonna be those guys are gonna be singing, uh, you know, Oh Solo Mio for a long time. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Sip on some some vino and pasta in the prison. As they should, yes, the, these two kids. I know exactly which case you're talking about. Joseph Tacopino, we're out of time. But it's always great to have you great on the job. Bernie and Sitch. It really is. We love you, man. I love you guys, too. Go Thank Raiders. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yeah, go Raiders. Uh, they play well.